Hello. How are you guys? I'm doing good, thank you. Nice to see you guys. I don't know who's here, but I see a couple people that I recognize. Nice to see you guys, though, regardless. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the project that we were working on yesterday. So, yesterday we were working on an image hosting uh, service. And we were using React, Nest.js, and DigitalOcean Spaces. And I'll show you guys what we've done so far for those who... Uh, didn't catch stream yesterday or didn't stay until the end. So I'll show you guys what we've done. Um, so let me go ahead and start up the application. So let's see. Let's go into here. Let's start this and let's start this up. And I don't have the code on GitHub yet, but I will have it once like once like the end of the stream or next stream. But I'm not done with it yet, so I don't want to like push any code yet. Lolly and Redutsu, welcome back to the stream. Nice to see you guys again. Okay, so pretty much what we were doing yesterday was we built this interface that allows the user to click on this upload image area and they can upload images. They can also drag and drop the images directly without needing to actually click on anything. So it makes it a lot more easier. So that way they don't actually need to, you know, it's more, it's more, uh, it's more, uh, it gives a better experience, you know? It's, so for example, I can click on here and then it'll ask me, uh, not, well, it'll open up the file explorer dialogue and I can select what images I want to upload. So I can go ahead and just like upload, let's say this PNG. And we also added this, uh, this X so you can remove that image. Let's say you change your mind. You don't want to upload that. Okay. Uh, it's going good, Cinnamon Roll. Thank you. How about you? So, uh, yeah, so let me actually go ahead and open up DigitalOcean because I actually need to get my... I need to get the DigitalOcean Spaces credentials. But I'm going to show you guys what that looks like on DigitalOcean. It's actually really cool. So if you don't know what DigitalOcean Spaces is, it's basically... Uh, it's similar to Amazon Web Services S3. So if you've used S3 before or if you've used any... Uh, if you've used anything that's that allows you to store objects it's pretty much that's pretty much what it is okay so uh, let me go ahead and open this up okay so this is where all of our images are uploaded so you can see that we have this image uh all over here okay and we also generated a unique id for each image so we can actually keep track of it a lot easier so let's see what are we gonna do uh, oh, I got to get the credentials because I actually reset my credentials. Uh, RMLY, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. So, okay, so let me go ahead and grab my credentials real quick. So, let me do that. All right, let me go ahead and set my environment variables real quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, 
So let me just set up the uh, environment variables real quick. All right, there we go. So now I can actually, uh, I can actually just leave that open. I just had to put everything in an environment variable. Uh, Vladislav, I think that's your name, right? From yesterday, welcome to the stream. Devil Zoo, welcome to the stream. Nice, nice, nice to see you back. Violet, welcome back to the stream. Okay, awesome. So I have my environment variable saved up, so that's good. I do think I need to restart the application, so let me do that in order for them to work. Okay, so let's just run this again. All right, cool. So. I, re I just reset up my keys, okay, and I put them in environment variable, so that way I don't like you know expose it. You always want to keep your credentials, like your API keys, your secret keys. You always want to keep those uh, a secret, obviously, because if you don't, uh, you know there will be issues. Okay, so. Bring that back here and let's go back here. Okay, cool. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file. So let's upload this. Now when I click on here, uh, let's see, it seems like, uh, it says failed to send requests. So it seems like we have an error. Uh, let's see, cannot read byte length of undefined. So let's see, it's interesting. Byte length of undefined, wonder what the issue is. Mm, might be an issue with the environment. Wait, that's my guess. Space is secret key. Can I read property byte length of undefined? That's quite interesting. Well, we have the image here. Mm. Let's try again. Huh, that's interesting. Let me double check something. Maybe it's not reading the environment variable properly. Yeah, so the environment variables aren't being read. And I might need to actually install another module from Nest.js. Let me do that real quick. All right, so the reason why I'm getting that error is because of my environment variable. It, sa it says it's null, which is very weird. Even though I know for a fact it's not null. Uh, let me see. All right, I'm gonna restart my Visual Studio Code. Maybe, maybe that's why, I need to actually restart the Visual Studio Code. Okay, we'll try again. There we go, I just had to restart my Visual Studio code because I updated environment variable. Seems like we actually have to install, re restart the entire uh, VSC. Okay, so this should work now. Let's go back 
here. All right, so there we go. So we can upload images now. And if I refresh, you'll see that the image that I had just uploaded will appear on this little uh, interface. You'll see right over here. And you'll see the image, which is this one. And this is the URL to it. Okay, pretty cool. Now, uh, a couple things that we should probably do is we should, we also actually, I just realized, so we have a couple things that we need to do that I, uh, that I uh, wrote down yesterday. So we need to re install React Router DOM, and we basically need to uh, route the user to the correct image. Because right now we're uploading the image, but we're not able to actually ax the image, right? So we're gonna go ahead and focus on that today. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new terminal for the front end, and we're gonna install React Router DOM. Right there. So we'll, re we'll install React Router DOM and uh, that should be just fine. We also will install the types too for React Router DOM. So let's do that. So yarn add types React Router DOM. Okay. And we will need to use a database to save uh, the images. And I think for the database, we'll probably just use something like uh, MongoDB. I think MongoDB will be pretty, I think MongoDB is honestly fine. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we have React Router DOM, so let's set up the router real quick. So what we'll need to do is we'll basically need to have, for now, we'll have just two routes, okay? We'll have the main route where the user can go ahead and upload the image, and we'll have the second route where they can visit their uh, visit the image itself. So let's go to import React Router DOM. We're gonna import the browser router, and then we're just gonna wrap app around router, just like that, okay? Uh, so that'll do the trick. And now we just need to set up our routes. So we'll go ahead and import route from React Router DOM. And we'll also import a switch as well, okay? All right, so the routes that we'll need, we'll need basically just two routes. So let's go ahead and just create a switch and we'll need a route. So we'll set exact true. The path will be the, just a slash, that's the home page. And we'll need the component. So the component itself, we're gonna create a uh, image upload page. So pages, okay, and then we'll go over here and just export that. And all we we'll want to do is just import the page and then import up image upload. And then we'll just import this right over here, okay? All right, so we'll also need a second page. So the second page is just going to be the image route and it'll need a parameter, which is the ID of the image. My screen resolution is 2560 by 1440p. Yeah, I know if you just have the prop itself, it'll count as a truthy value, but I don't know, it's something, it just feels weird just having a, a prop like this, it just feels weird, but I was contemplating on leaving it like that, but then I was like, you know what, let me just put true. All right, so for this, uh, so this is the route that is going to get the user to see the actual image. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're basically just going to show the image to the user. So we'll create another page called image result.tsx. And this is just going to be the page that shows the result of the image. Uh, image result page. Okay, and uh, let me annotate this with a page right over here. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's also do image result page just like that. 
Cool. All right. So we'll actually need a database because we'll need to save every reference to the database. That's the only way that we'll be able to actually know what image is what. Now, um, I actually, actually, you know what? We might not even need a database because um, I think, actually, no, we do, we do, we do. Um, actually, do we? Because, actually, no, I don't think we do, actually. Because if I, if I think about it, right, we have all of the image references saved here. Uh, let me actually look up something, AWS client S3. Let me look up the documentation for the S3 client. Because essentially we just need to actually, yeah, I don't think we'll need a database actually, which is nice. Yeah, but I think we could just actually, we can just invoke the DigitalOcean Spaces API and just get the image directly from there. So we don't need any actual, uh, yeah. That's actually really nice actually. Let me see. Okay, so looking at the documentation here, uh, we just need to find the correct command or the function to get the correct object. And we want to get it by the file name. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure there's probably other, other things too. I'll have to check the API for that. So let me double check. Let me go into image services real quick or the controller itself. And let me go ahead and just console log const.log uploaded and we're going to upload another file and I want to look at the logs and see what it says Okay, mm, we gotta go to the storage API and see what functions we can get. Uh, get image. Get object. Yeah, I think that's what's called get object. Now the question is, what parameters can we pass if we get object? I think it'd be the key. So the key itself would just be the uh, the, uh, the unique ID that we generated using the UID API or the UUID API. And since we don't necessarily need to save anything to the database, because if, if you think about it, why would you need to save it to the database, right? Because the user is always going to need to be responsible for having the reference to the image. They're always going to need to have that unique code, okay? Now, we would need to definitely save it to the database if there was an existing object. But again, we can always just check the DigitalOcean space and see if there's an existing object with the current key, okay? So we actually don't even need a database for this. Hey, Anton, it's Soham here. Remember Satish Shet, that was my dad's account. Yeah, I, I I remember you. I remember I remember seeing you around back in like January when I was streaming. Nice to see you again. Hope you're hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing okay. So I think we don't even need a database at all because if you think about it, the digital ocean spaces is our database. And I I think honestly, if we really need a database. We would only need a database if we wanted to um, have like the references to the images in advance. But I don't I really don't think we need a database if I'm being honest with you. We'll know when we need a database, but for now I think we can get away from uh, from not having a database. We, we Like I said, we just need the reference to the image and that's just going to be the key. 
Now, uh, it's a little bit tricky because right now everything is saved as uh, this key is how it's being saved. So we'll need to add the .jpg, I think, at the end. Well, maybe not. But I think it wouldn't really make much of a difference if we added a .jpg. Yeah. We could add we could add that JPEG, but well we won't do that. We won't do that. Actually, you know, I will, I will, I will. We'll save it with a dot JPEG. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, high school is kind of tight. I have taken one CS course. It's in Java, but it's fun because it's the class by choice. So is my personal interest, which is better than parents forcing you. Yeah, that's a, that's true. And I'm glad that you're taking the class at an early age because it gives you a head start when you go to college, you know, so that's good. That's good to hear. Okay, let me try it uploading. Let me try uploading another image again. And let me go and refresh and let me just double check to see what it's saved as. I really want that dot JPEG at the end. I don't even know if this is a if this is even a good way to honestly uh, save it, but I think it's fine. Cause what if it's a .png? You know, like we're not handling that case. Okay, uh, but we do have the .png. Okay, so what's gonna happen is when we get the image, we're gonna get the key. Okay, so we're gonna have to uh, let's see. I think with the API, we can just pass in a route parameter because this is a get, okay? And we'll just need the key and the key is just gonna be a string. So with in SJS, oh, whoops, this is a key string. So in SJS, this is, um, this allows you to actually get the route key, okay? So just wanted to point that out there. I wrote comment but didn't show up. If they have the pictures written at the bottom of the left page, it would look like me. It would show the size. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think we have a lot of uh, we have we definitely have a lot of great suggestions from you, and some other people too. I definitely want to. I definitely want to like implement those suggestions for sure. I just want to get the bare bones done first. Uh, increase the font, sure I can. I can definitely increase the font. There you go. Is that better? If, uh, if I need to increase it, let me know. Okay, so this is the controller right now. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, just console log the key. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to invoke this image controller route. And the way we're going to, the way we're going to reference this route is on the front end, uh, this image result page, it's going to have the prop. Okay. It's going to have the prop because we're, we're rendering this based on the route and we're going to, if we, if we actually just console log, uh, I'm just going to use this as anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm just say hi and let's go to this slash image route. So you're going to see it says hi. And then in the console, it logs history, location, match, and etc. cetera. Uh, if anyone has ever used TypeScript with React Router DOM, I'd definitely appreciate some advice on how to properly type annotate the route. I've tried doing it myself, but I ran into a lot of annoying issues. Like, I know one thing that you could do is you could do something like history and then do this. But I don't really know if this is really a good way to doing it, if I'm being honest with you. Because if I try to do history.push, push is not even a, a method. But I know I can actually import history from React Router DOM. But, I, but that would be a problem too, which is really annoying. Or I think it's from history. 
I think actually if I do that, that would allow me to push. Okay, I think that I think that kind of works too. Uh, what is better in your opinion, Google, Firebase, or Amazon AWS? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really, I can't really give much of an opinion because I never really use the three of them. Because I, like I said, I use DigitalOcean mostly. I, I can definitely give a better opinion when I've used you know the three of them. Man, I love seeing you type. Even I'm developing touch typing. It's important skill. I know AWS is the pain. I use Firebase. Firebase is good for beginners. Others a little bit complicated. I've never used Azure before, but I have used a little bit of Firebase. I think Firebase is cool. Okay, let me refresh. Okay, so when I refresh, you see, uh, let me go in console log props history. Oh, not history. We don't want history. I'm sorry. Uh, we want match. Well, let me just console log props real quick. So what we want is we want uh, this match object because it gives us the params. So uh, I'm not sure how to type annotate match, to be honest with you. I think we can just do match. I think, I think match just comes from React Router. Now if I console log match, we're gonna be able to get the uh, params and we want the parameter, which is the ID. And I think match is actually a generic type, so we can actually type out that too. I know you're doing something, I just wanna share what's on my mind. DigitalOcean is quite easy, I've heard, compared to them, DigitalOcean is better interface. DigitalOcean is very easy, but uh, it's great. It's DigitalOcean is great, and it's very beginner friendly if you're just getting started, but obviously, uh, I would say that um, DigitalOcean can definitely scale well but a lot of enterprises like to use things like AWS. So like I said, it's really up to the company and what they want to use. It is, AWS is obviously a lot pricier, but they do have a free tier for 12 months. So you can actually play around with it. So I'm gonna type annotate this image result, image props. I always wanna try your best to type annotate as much as you can, because that way you can actually take advantage of TypeScript. So when I reference params, I should be able to get ID. And the reason why is because I have this type annotated and that's exactly what we want. All right, so now if I log it, you'll see I have one, but obviously this is not gonna be one, it's gonna be the unique ID of the image. So it could be anything, okay? So now what we're going to do is, um, here's what we're going to need to do. Okay, because how do we know if it's a valid image ID or not, right? We'll actually need to call the API. So we'll need to invoke our Nest.js API. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, another uh, function. So export const. And let me actually do this real quick. Uh, there we go. So we're going to create a, uh, so this is going to be a get request. So get uploaded image. And we're going to need to retrieve the image by the key. So this will be a string. And we're going to do axios.get. And let me actually just define the URL, API URL. And then we'll, we'll use our template strings to uh, format everything. So API URL slash, okay, great, good. And we'll do the same thing here, but instead it's going to be uh, API URL slash API slash image, and then the key, right? Because on our Nest JS controller, you can see that the path to this is slash image, and then we want to get the key, okay? So there's the uh, URL. Uh, use route match hook. What is the use route match hook? Did you build the, did you build the API? Yes, we, we have actually started the API yesterday. What's the use match? Does this give you the, oh, oh, wow. All right, I did not know that. Thank you for letting me know. That's a good way to uh, use route match. Is it, okay, let me ask you this. Is it better to use the props from the component or is it better to use the hook? That's what I'm really curious about. Because with the hook, you're calling a function, right? 
But I'm just trying to figure out if it's better, like, you know, to use a hook or to get the prop itself. Obviously, I can just do, I can just ignore all this, right? And I can just call use route match, right? Um, and then we can obviously type annotate this to give us what we need, right? And that will give me ID. Hanson, if you can help me with some advice, I want to decide a college major. I know I'm a science school, I'm confused with computer science, but I also need to film. I mean, well, I mean, you know, like the thing is though, is that you gotta, you gotta decide, uh, you gotta, you gotta think of it in terms of what it is that you like. And, um, you gotta think about what you want to do, obviously. Like, I mean, it, this, this answer is very subjective. Um, This answer would be subjective, so it's really opinionated, but you have to decide what you want to do based on what you think is best for, uh, like for your happiness and financial wise. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of people will say like, you know, like you shouldn't choose a career because it makes a lot of money and that's true, but it's not wrong to get into a career because it pays a lot of money. So obviously in the computer science field, it does pay a lot of money, but should you get into it only because of the money? No. But you also have to decide on what makes you happy. If you if you find it happier to do film, then go for it. If you find it happier to do computer science, go for it. There's nothing wrong with trying both majors and seeing which one you like. Because I know a lot of people in college they change they change majors over time. You know, so there's no, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so uh, we're gonna call get uploaded image. So we're gonna have to use the use effect hook. Uh, so. <clears throat> So we are calling hooks in order. So we're calling the use route match hook and then we're getting to get the ID. So I think that's I think that's fine. Now I don't like this, so let me just get this real quick. And uh, uh, let me go ahead and do a const response. Oops. Await, uh, and what is it called again? Uh, get uploaded image. And we're going to need to actually Uh, I'm going to create a function async. Uh, async function async. No. Wait, what am I wait, what am I doing? Const uh Let's see. Call API. Uh, let's see. Normally, I usually use try. Uh, let's see. We want to use a try catch in this. So, what do you think of Hetzner Cloud? Never heard of it before. Sorry, uh, bro. I'm tuning out. Good night. It's night in India. All right. Have a good night, man. Yo, Alberto. Welcome back to the stream. Nice to see you, man. How are you? Let's add some state so we can see if it's loading or not. Uh, whoops. What is quick? Oh, it's had something like stat sass. So yeah, you can see that it's calling the API. If you look at the logs, this is the API logs. Uh, you can see that it's calling the API, so that's good. All right, so on the API, we are logging the key. All right, so so good, that's, that's good. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to fetch 
the correct image from DigitalOcean Spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into image service and we're going to go into image service over here and I'm going to go ahead and I think the read function is what we need. So const image equals await this dot image service dot read. So we're going to need to pass in the key. Okay, so key string. And we're going to go to the implementation over here. And we're going to implement that here. So key string. And then we're going to call the i storage service. I'm just going to call this key. So we have the iSorge service interface, and then we are implementing that interface in sort service. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a uh, get image, okay? So this should get the correct object for us, okay? Uh, so in the read function, we're just going to return this dot storage service dot get image, and we're gonna pass in key. And this is going to return this promise call to the controller. And then we can just simply console log image okay so let's try it out and let's see what happens so i'm going to refresh it should say it's yeah it, it throws an error no such key which is good now let me actually see what happens when i go ahead and let me get the key real quick if it would let me copy the key that'd be nice okay so let's go ahead and go to this route and let's see what happens it should not throw an error and you can see that we actually have the image. See, the image has been found, which is good. Okay, now I don't like the fact that it throws an error, but we can always just try catch. I thought it would, I thought it would just return empty, but it's fine. We can always just try catch. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. So if the image was found, I guess what we could do is we can return a, uh, a 200. So res, oops, what the hell is that? What the hell is this? <sighs> I think you can put a settings file for the site owner. Owner can easily turn on off like settings like NS and very true custom link explorer false. Have you ever tried Vulture or Linode? Uh, I've never tried Vulture, but I have heard of Linode. I've never tried Linode, but I've I do have an account. I've just never actually uh, like paid for anything or never really tried anything out. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So if I refresh, we should get a two hundred code. Good, we're getting a two hundred status code. Now, if I go ahead and if I try entering something else, you're going to see we get a 400. So that's good. All right. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to display the image to the user. So since, we, since we're using the Digital Spaces, Digital Ocean Space API, uh, and we're handling this by checking to see if the image exists or not. So if the image actually exists, we know how we can, uh, we, we know how to obtain the URL. Okay. All we got to do is just add the .jpg at the end. Okay, or we actually don't even need to add the .jpg. We just need to, uh, we just all we need to do is we just need to send the URL concatenated with the key. That's all we gotta do. Okay, so uh, the way I'm gonna do this is let's first get the URL of the space. So this is the URL. Uh, so I'll just simply do const. Uh, actually, I should probably put this somewhere. Okay, and then what we'll do is we will pretty much just send the spaces URL concatenated with the key and uh, that should do the trick. Um, all right, so on the front end, we should see a URL. Yep. So, 
Wait, what? Oh, whoops. There we go. Let's try it again. There we go. So that gives us the key. Okay. Uh, and what we're going to do is... Uh, okay. So we're going to fix this. We're going to actually have to handle... We're going to have to have the JPEG later. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and send this to the front end. And now on the front end, we can go ahead and uh, do this. So let me go ahead and do something real quick. Sorry. So return loading. Now watch this. Uh, so we're, we, I want the data from the endpoint, okay, which is gonna be this URL and that's the image. So we're gonna go ahead and create a state variable called source, set source equals use state. And this is just going to be a string, okay? And all we're gonna do is we're just going to set the source to whatever that is. And we'll provide the all uh, image, okay? Uh, Duck, welcome back to the stream. Have you ever thought of switching to Linux? Yes, I have. and. I don't think I ever can because, um, I mean, I could, but it'd just be a lot of work for me because uh, if I wanted to play games, I'd have to use a virtual machine on Linux. And um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have a good graphics card right now. So like using the GPU and then passing and all that kind of stuff. I just don't think I have had any plans. I've tried, but I realized that I really want to, I'd rather stick with Windows because um, I just like Windows a lot. All right, so let's watch this. So you see, when I refresh, you can see that the image is here and we have the image that we uploaded, which is great. Okay, so now we can literally go to whatever image we want. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna fix something up real quick. I'm gonna get rid of this ugly uh, UID. Uh, so instead I'm just gonna actually use a shortened one. So what I'll do is I'll just simply go to the back end and I'll just uh, delimit the entire string with, uh, I'll split it up using uh, the dash. So let's do that real quick. So let's go to, yep, right over here. So what I'll do is I'll simply just do this. It'll be, so we'll, we'll do UUIDV4. Uh, so this is going to split up by dashes and we're going to get the first one because this is now an array. We'll get the first one. And then uh, let's see. Okay. So now let's go ahead and upload images now. Uh, L2 Ascends, hi Ascend, I love your videos, thank you, I appreciate it. Astro Community, are you a self-taught developer? Uh, well, I went to college for computer science and I learned coding. I learned Java from there. The only part of me that's self-taught is learning uh, web dev. So I'm self-taught with web dev, but there is influence with the comp side degree because I learned coding from there. So that influenced me to learn web dev. Okay. So not fully self-taught, but if, but web dev, yes, self-taught, but when it comes to coding in general, no, there we go. So now, uh, watch this. So now we have shortened the link, but now what we got to do is when we finish uploading, we should navigate the user to the correct, we should navigate the user to the correct route once it's done. So let's do that. Uh, so let's go into the front end and we're going to go ahead and do this. So image upload page. So, uh, on success, which is right over here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and call the use, uh, let's, what's it called again? History, use history, use history. And we're going to go ahead and push. Well, first we'll actually need the key. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let me actually see what's returned real quick. Uh, OK. 
Okay. So in the logs, what is logged when the upload is successful? We need to get the uh, the file name. We need to get the file name. So I guess we don't even need to return this. We can just return the key. I guess we don't really, really need to return anything else other than that. Are you making a video on this? Uh, if I were to make a video on this, it would have to be a simpler version because this one's like, you know, I, I come, I'm kind of going all out on this one. So yeah. Okay, uh, let's do this. So. Damn, is there really no way to just get the... I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed. Create, upload. Let me do something, let me change the function to upload. I don't really like how it's called. There we go. So there's really no way how I can just Do I play games? I do play video games. Uh, not so much anymore, but I play simple, like I just play, you know, casual games like City Skylines. That's the current game that I'm currently playing. I used to play League and Overwatch, but I, I don't play those games anymore because it just, it's just like a waste of time for me. Nothing against video games. I just, uh, I just play, I've just been, I've been playing video games for a long time. I've been playing video games since I was like, you know, 10 years old, 12 years old, since I was a kid. You know, and then they just take up too much time of my day. So, um, yeah, like I don't want to, um, I don't want to spend all my time playing video games. You know what I mean? Because I just have a lot of other things to do now. And yeah, like I guess nothing against people who play video games. I'm from America. Okay, so the only way to actually get this key, uh, well, I mean, I could, mm, let's see. I mean, I could actually do this. I could generate the key over here. Yeah, I think I'll do that instead. I'll generate the key here and then pass the key into upload. That way I can actually have the key because I don't want to, I don't, I really don't want to return anything else other than that. So let's see. So let's get the key. Let's just fix up our interface real quick. So image service interface will need a key as well. So we need to go into image service and then take in the key. Okay, good. And then now when we call upload, we just gotta pass in the key. So now when we go to upload, we pass in the key, pass in the key, because I just want to return the prompts. I don't really want to do any try, uh, like any uh, like any error handling inside these functions. I want to do the error handling in the controller. Uh, what keyboard am I using? I have a Ducky One Too Many. 
Hafu, uh, Hafu, sup? Welcome to the stream. Levente Hardy, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Hi, I love your videos. Keep it up. Thank you, I appreciate it. And welcome to the stream. Okay, so now what I can do is I can pretty much just do this. I can do result status tool one, and I can send the spaces URL concatenate with key. So, uh, actually, wait, I don't even need the spaces URL. I just, I just need the key. Sorry. All right, so watch this. So when I upload, uh, you see the data is right over here. So we need, we need that data from the front end. So let me go ahead and go over here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the data and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, oh, whoops. We're gonna rename that as key. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call history.push and we're gonna call that URL slash image with the ID key. Because remember the correct route is slash image with the ID. I really should call it uh, I really should call it ID. Actually, yeah, I'll call it an ID instead. Or I'm sorry, key. And let's go here and we're gonna rename this to the key. There we go. Let's, let's be consistent with our variable names or at least try our best to be consistent. I right, watch this. So when I go ahead, when I click upload, it brings me to the next page. Now there's a, the reason why, okay, so the problem here is that uh, it's broken because uh, on the back end we're actually uploading, we're, we're, at, we're actually uh, adding the .jpg. So I think what I'll do is I'll actually remove the .jpg instead because we don't want to hard code that because we, we have, obviously we have different types of files. So you don't want to like, you know, like you don't want to like, you know, confuse it with like a PNG, for example. So let me go inside storage service and let me just remove this .jpg. And let's go ahead and try to upload a file again. So let's upload this. There you go. So now we have the image over here. So now, whenever the image is uploaded, it'll navigate them to the next page. Okay, and if I refresh, you'll see the image is over here. Okay, it's over here. Now, obviously we can style it a little bit. We can make it look more presentable, like how Imgur does it. Okay, but I mean, this is this is pretty much it. Like, this is the image. Like that's, there's nothing else to it. Right? And if you want to open the image in a new tab, this will give you the actual raw source, like how Imgur does it, right? I don't know what the hell is going on, but I like it. Yeah, we're building a image hosting service, something like that. But yeah, like, you know, now we have the image. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If I go back, we can upload another image. Let's do it again. And now we have the image over here. We obviously do, oh yeah, we should probably uh put a certain size to it so let me do that real quick let's go to image uh here image result page and let's go over here let's just set a fixed width of 800 and i think what i want to do is i'll probably put this in the center so let me go ahead and actually just wrap this with a page so that way it's centered or i spoke too soon oh wait actually i need to pass in the properties if i want it to be in the center or, yeah, yeah, let's do that. There you go. So now it's in the middle. So let's go ahead and do it again. So let's upload this image. Okay, upload. Done. So, uh, yeah, you should add to the API where you could upload with ShareX. What's ShareX? I have no idea what that is. All right, so let's go ahead and use the drag and drop feature. So let's drag the image here. Let's upload it. There we go, bam, the image is over here. We should also add some loading indication too, like maybe like a loader. Uh, I think that's something that I can play around with, but yeah, so, so far, and if I go ahead and like I said, if I open image new tab, this gives me the actual image source. Okay, now if I were to actually download this image, it would save it as all files. Uh, we gotta make it save it as a JPEG instead. Uh, hey, what's up, Ellie, how are you? Nice to see you in the stream. Hope you're doing well. All right, cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it with this part. So we can go back and always upload the image. I think that's pretty cool. I think that, uh, let me see if I have anything else written down. Let's see, we're done here. Yeah, so we're pretty much done with this.
Which language am I using? I'm using uh, TypeScript. All right, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like it. I like it. We can preview. Uh, close it out. I click on the dark area. It closes out. Click that. I like it. I really like it. All right, cool. Uh, React. We're using React. Awesome. So this is pretty cool. I like it. All right. So now, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. All right, are you ever gonna do a source code in your vids? What do you mean, are you ever going to do source code? You mean link source code? Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so. Yeah, at some point. At some point, yes. All right. So let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Like that's pretty much it with this project, honestly. I think that's just the bare bones of everything. Uh, there's obviously a lot more features that we can add. Let me see if, let me see something real quick. Okay. Um, all right, that's pretty much it with the basics of this. Let me go ahead and do something real quick. Let me do this. Let me put this code on GitHub real quick. So that way you guys can, uh, you know. What's a good name for this project? What should I call this project? I'm trying to think of names. Let's see, image synonym. What's a synonym for picture? Got to think of a unique name, a unique name for this project. Oh, it doesn't even matter. All right, image, upload, react. All right, I'm going to add this code to GitHub real quick. And then we're gonna just finalize some stuff and then I'm gonna call it a, call it a stream. All right, let's see. Push it to GitHub. All 
Okay, so the code is on GitHub for the front end. Now let's upload the back end. So let me just create a repository. Now, let me just make sure that we don't have any API keys or anything in here for I, uh... okay, good, 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 good. All right, awesome. No, I'm not, I'm not ending the stream now. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm uploading the code and then what I said was I'm going to upload the code and then we're going to uh, finalize some stuff. We're going to put some final touches to the application and then we're going to end the stream. So I'm, I'm still going to be coding. Uh, hey, IC builds, how are you? I am doing good, thank you. All right, is this how you do it? links? Yeah. I'm just writing some documentation just so that uh, it's presentable. All right, so uh, let's see. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and just uh, add this to GitHub and then we can continue coding. There we go. So the code is on GitHub right now. So if you guys want the code, it's on my GitHub for those who asked for it yesterday or today. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description later. All right, so where are we right now? So let me write out a couple things that I wanna do. Yeah, no worries.
So right now, if I actually upload a PNG, does it actually get saved? Does it actually get, yes, yeah, you see this is the problem because the content type is, uh, so on the back end, we're saving the content type as a JPEG. So we do have to save, so for example, if I upload, a, if I were to upload like a, an animated picture, like a GIF, it would not show up as a GIF, it would show up as a JPEG. So we gotta fix that on the back end real quick. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go in the back end. So instead of hard coding it and saving it as a, as a slash JPEG, uh, what we should do is we should check the file type. So first let's go ahead and just console log file. And I think uh, mime type. What's your code theme? Uh, the mime type itself is, uh, let's see. A mime type stands for media type, more multi-purpose uh, internet mail extension or mime type. And essentially what we wanna do is we wanna check to see what the mime type is. Now I think this is just a string. So let me actually just see in the logs what mime types. So if we actually look at the images that we can upload, you can see right now we're only accepting PNG files, JPEGs, and uh, let me see what else it is that we're accepting. Uh, I know we only have three. So we have just regular, what is the difference between JPEG and J, like JPEG or J? Are they just the same? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so we should check the MIME type. So let's go ahead and upload a file. Now if I upload and if I look in the logs, you can see that the MIME type, it says image slash PNG, right? That's being logged from storage service right over here. That's the MIME type. So we should definitely, uh, let me actually save a couple more. Let's try JPEG and see what it says in the console log. So yeah, you can see the mime type image slash JPEG. So we should definitely pass that in. So image, so instead of doing image slash JPEG, we'll do uh, file dot mime type. Okay. Uh, let me see. So now watch this. If I were to upload an actual PNG file, it'll actually be saved as a PNG. You'll see that, oh wait. That's interesting. Well, it seems like it's, it looks like a PNG on here, but there's that white background. Okay, yeah, if I save it, like if I were to actually try to save this, it saves as a PNG. Like if I, like for example, if you see over here, if I try to save it to my file system, you'll see that it saves as a PNG. I'm not sure why though, when you view it over here, it shows the white background. It really should be transparent. Uh, maybe it's because, uh, that we don't have the extension at the end, though I don't know why that would be an issue, though. But you know what? Maybe we could try adding the extension and see, uh, and see what happens. Okay. All right. So, uh, so good thing that we were fixing the content type. So that's good. Cool, so we have all our images saved. Uh, all right, so. What if you try to save the image with that white background? Is it still PNG? You know, let me try. That's a good idea. Let me try real quick. So let's save it. Uh, yeah, so the white background is actually not there. It might just be a browser thing, honestly. 
Might also just be a browser thing. Yeah, you can see that the you can see that the image was uh there was no uh white background, which is great. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, so now that that's done, uh, I should also write another to do. This is something for later. Is AWS free? No. Well, if they have a free tier, but it, it, it itself is not free. They have a free tier, but it's not actually like, you know, like fully free. You can just use it for a limited time. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead. I wanna do something real quick with the front end. Uh, let me see. I really wanna see if I can, I really wanna add like a progress. like some kind of like loading bar on the front. I think that'd be nice. Or we can add like a spinner. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and install React spinners actually. Let me go ahead and install React spinners real quick. So this gives us a bunch of spinners that we can work with. And I think we do need to install the types too. Uh, okay, oh, actually we don't, okay, great. Cool, all right, so uh, what I wanna do is, let's see. Uh, let's see, so we wanna display a spinner uh, we'll, we'll actually use an overlay and that's great because we can actually reuse the uh, the overlay that we created yesterday and just add a spinner background. So I'm going to go ahead and create a component called uh, spinner.tsx and uh, let's do export const spinner. And this is literally just going to be an overlay with a React spinner. That's literally all it's going to be. Hi, what about actual progress bar with percentage? Uh, so with that, I would say, so yesterday I was actually Googling how to track the progress of an image that's being uploaded. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Let me actually look at Imgur real quick. Let me, let me upload something on Imgur. And let me see how they do it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, let me, I'll, I'll have to Google something real quick. Hey Macy, how are you? Welcome back to the stream. How are you? Okay, so React Spinners has a bunch of spinners that we can use. Uh, so you can really use any one of these. Um, doesn't really matter which one you wanna use, honestly. Let's just do Pac-Man Loader just for fun. And let's go ahead and let's, let's try this overlay. Wait, I'm not overlay spinner. All right, yeah, you can see, you can see the, you can see the, uh, you can see it. Uh, just hopping by to say that I love your channel. I am, I'm beginning to currently fiddling with Express. Thanks for everything. Hey Blue, how's it going? Thank you for checking out the stream. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad to hear that you like uh, my channel. Thank you. Yo, what's up, Sarah Mods? How are you, man? Long time no see. I hope you're doing well. How's uh, how's everything? I'm gonna do this instead. Instead of I'm, I'm gonna do this uh, here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. 
I want to pass in the spinner. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me label this as an FC. So that's a function component. So that way we get the children node and then we can just simply get that. And what I can do is in the spinner, I can just pass in Pac-Man loader instead. Get that. Does that work? I hope it does. There we go. So that way I can use this, I can reuse this over and over again. So I don't, I don't have it hard coded to just one spinner. I'm just asking if you could, if you would make GraphQL series. Uh, I did actually make a GraphQL crash course before, but unless if you mean something specific, uh, I could definitely look into that. I'm doing good. I just watched the playback of your system. You're doing amazing with this project. I use Digital Space with my CDN, which I found very useful. Thank you, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. And yeah, DigitalOcean is great. I use it for all my projects because it's really affordable. And I actually, uh, I actually uh, just really like DigitalOcean. I think it's really cool. I've known of it since like 2018, and that's when I started using it. And it's just really simple. Like it gets the job done. They have a lot of cool stuff. They have managed databases. They have API proxies. They have uh, uh, firewalls that you can use it's just really awesome i like it a lot oh right, yeah i'm gonna get rid of the pac-man spinner because i really don't like it uh i'll just use a regular clip loader instead i think clip loader is better there we go cool Wait, what, you have a crash course? Yeah, I have a React crash course. I mean, not React, GraphQL crash course. Okay, so we're going to show the spinner when it's loading. So what we're gonna do is, I mean, I guess I can just put it over here. Back. So let's try it now, so. Here we go. Okay, there's a problem right now. The problem, I think, I think maybe you guys may have seen it. Uh, let me do this real quick. Let me go ahead and do this. I think you guys may have seen it. You see this? Wait, hold on, what the hell? Oh, it's because of this push. Okay, well, let me just comment this out real quick. So like you can change the loading animation from the children property. Yeah, I can change it whatever I want. So instead of hard coding, I can just pass in any spinner I want. So it's more dynamic. All right, so if I upload, you see this? Okay, yeah, that's a problem. Why is that doing that? Oh, I know why. It's because, uh, okay. Yeah, I know why that's happening. It's because that image, uh, God damn it. All right, let me, I, 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 know, I, I know how to fix it. The reason why that's happening is because the overlay uh, the, hold on, wait, let me look at it again. The reason why this is happening is because, well, first of all, this image shouldn't even be on top. Uh, so I'm confused why that image itself is there. It might be because the overlay, let's look at the Z index real quick. There we go. All right, you just have to change the Z index. All right, yeah, there we go. So now we can't, we can't, wait, hold on, what the hell? All right, there we go, perfect. So yeah, now I can actually click on it, so that's good. All right, awesome. So upload goes to the next page, good. Awesome, so now, whenever I upload, it'll spin and it'll go to the next page. Cool, 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 I like it. All right, awesome. Awesome, all right, and we can also do the same thing with the upload page, so, uh, not upload page, result page. So what we can do here is we can actually, uh, I wanna see if we can track, uh, like, so you see how when, when I refresh, it takes a while for the image to load. I wanna see if we can actually track the progress of the image. Uh, let me go ahead and get some water real quick because I am exhausted, give me a second.
All right, I'm back. All right. Uh, so let's see. I think a better thing I could do is I can show. It, I can also show a spinner here too when it's loading. So we can actually do the same thing. So instead of just showing like this loading div, we can just do spinner, and then. We can pass in a different spinner. So let's try clock loader. So watch this. So you can see that the clock loader spinner loads. Though I don't really like the animation. Maybe we can try something different. Maybe we could do like a bar loader maybe. Yeah, though you see that it does have that weird animation though. We can also add like an effect to the image so we can make it add, we can animate the image if we really want to. Like we can make it fade in. But uh yeah, it's pretty much, you know, just to make it look a little bit better. Uh and then so yeah, if you were to sh sh share this link with anyone, they would see the image. Okay. Uh let me see what else can we do. Uh let's see. Trying to think of what are some other things that we could ideally do. Uh, let's see. We could also, I mean, we could also add a feature where, I mean, it would like if we were to do that, it would just remove like this, you know, this. Uh, we could just get rid of the button. What we could do is we could do something where when you drag it, it'll automatically upload. But you know, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and try doing the NSFW uh, feature that someone recommended, where where they said that you can uh, you can mark like an image as not safe for work. Uh, but before I do that though, I should also mention that right now this this only handles one image well, We might want to handle multiple images later. So that's just something to note for the future So let me go ahead and just write a quick commit message Added spinners Okay, so yeah, that's just something that we might want to do in the future Okay uh, where we can handle multiple images so you can create like an album, right? So this starts off from a small project of just uploading one image into a bigger project where you can have things like photo albums and stuff. And then you can start creating things like carousels, you can create galleries, whatever. So you just have to be creative, you know, like something simple like creating an image upload project can turn into something big. So I think one thing that we can do is we can, uh, let's see, uh, we can also do something where we can also create a feature, right? We can also do something where when they upload the image, we can allow the user to go to the next page. And then the next page is where they can, you know, configure all the settings. They can do things such as, you know, set the set options, right? So, uh, so before they actually upload the image, before they actually publish the image to the web for everyone to see, we, they can, they can uh, you know, opt into what options. We can also add like a filter down here instead of having it to go to the next page. So let's so let's let's see what we could do real quick. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a component. Let's call this options.tsx. And what we'll do is we'll show the options down below. Now, uh, let's see something real quick. Uh, let me see. So let's see, let me actually just write this stuff down on a readme before I forget. So you had a timer once took the photo. Well, what are some other options that we can that we can do? Like what are some other image options? So with, with the NSFW tag, uh, the to handle that, like to actually show the image. So what you could do is you can like blur. I mean, I guess you could call it like a spoiler, add a spoiler tag. So you can do something like where to show NSFW 
or spoiler, you can add some background blur effect to it. And when the user clicks, clicks, All right, so I'm looking at Imgur right now, uh, and I'm trying to see what are some other things they have. What are some other options that they that they have? Uh, let's see. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Image resize, password to access the image. Oh yeah, let's write that down. Uh, let's just do so let's just call this authorized image requires a unique password to access image resize uh so compression but that would turn in but that would kind of turn this into a compression service though you know what I mean like that wouldn't, wouldn't that turn this into like a compression app instead of like an actual image hosting app you get what i'm trying to say like that would turn into something where you would compress the image not a bad suggestion what are some other so we have the nsfw tag so the so the nsfw we can add a timer let me just put this all down right here uh okay i think that's pretty much it let me go ahead and just move this Uh, all right, you know what? Let's just uh, let's get started. So um, I think actually what I'll do instead uh, What we could do is we can allow the user to upload the image and then we'll bring them to a page It's kind of like an imgur where they can like, you know, delete the image They can uh, they can share the image. They can set the NSFW tags, whatever it is that they want So they can up they can you know, they can uh, they can modify the image itself so I think this is where we actually would end up needing a database because we'll help, we'll obviously need to keep track of the features. Now, if we don't have a database, I think what we could do is we can actually add uh, metadata tags because I know there you can actually add metadata to this, but I don't think that'd be a good idea though because that's the metadata I think is actually for things like uh, I think the metadata is actually for things like the headers and stuff. So I don't think it'd be a good idea to uh, to do that. So, yeah, I don't think it'd be a good idea to, to do it in the metadata. Being able to change what the embed title and description would say if the link posts somewhere, for example, Discord. Embed title and description. Okay, that's actually a good idea. I, I don't know how to, I don't know what do you mean by that, but I know, like, I, I know exactly what you mean when you say that, but I, I just don't, I would have to, like, Google it to actually see the example, if that makes sense. But then any user can delete this in the account for the user. No, no, we'll only allow the user actually. Okay, so if we were actually to add a feature to allow the user to delete the image, we would need to use cookies and sessions to keep track of the user that's uploading the correct image. So we would need to actually, uh, we would need we would need the current cookie, okay? And the cookie would need to be associated with the image that was uploaded, and then that would be know that that's the correct user. What language uh, we're using? TypeScript, so React to TypeScript. So uh, change embed and title and description. Okay. Uh, but then sometimes they use, all right, well, if they, if, they, if they delete the cookie, then they won't be able to delete the image then. That's actually how it works on Imgur, I think. Or actually, we could do it by IP address. We could do it by IP address. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that filter thing real quick. Uh, so this might actually, I want to make, I actually want to make a nice, a nice little filter feature. Not a, I don't want to call it a filter feature. Let me call it something else. Maybe like, like an options feature. Let's call it options feature. That is what it's really called, anyways. So let me open up Figma real quick. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can just design a quick, little. Quick little, uh, you know, options, little like you know, options thing. 
So we would want like something like, you know, like, like a checkbox or something like something like, you know, uh, maybe like a checkbox, right? So let's turn this into a square real quick. Whoops. Sorry, 35. So this would be like a checkbox, right? And they, the user can check it. And I think for the background color, it'll just be the same color with uh, a stroke, maybe a white. Actually, let's do blue. Yeah, maybe two. So this is what our checkbox would look like. And let's give it some border radius. So we're gonna have like a, a checkbox that allows the user to uh, toggle if the image is an NSFW image or not. Okay, so let's try. Let's see, and, it would, and this, this little thing would go down this little uh, options thing would show right underneath, uh, right underneath the uh, the container. Uh, Leo, watch him. Thank you for donating the one one dollar, one euro and eleven uh, cents. Thank you. I appreciate that. I almost, I said dollar box and it's a euro, but thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So, all right. One thing that I don't like about using TypeScript with React is that the compilation takes forever sometimes, which is, you know, it's not, it's not a huge deal, but it's, it's a little bit annoying sometimes, you know. Uh, Prosta, welcome to the stream. How are you? Hello, it's pounds, but it's fine. Enjoy it. I don't need. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so uh, when the user, so there's gonna be options. So, so basically this would pretty much be right underneath over here. Uh, I'm trying to think what are some other options that we can have. I think maybe we can leave it as one little rectangle so we don't have to load it up too much. I think maybe for the checkbox, let's give it a thicker stroke. Maybe like maybe three. Let's group this together. First, let's group this with this. All right, uh, WSG, what's WS, what's WSG Bizology? All right, so what are some other options? NSFW, uh, let's see. Mm, what are some other options that we can add? NSFW, I'm trying to think. Spoiler. Spoiler and NSFW kind of are the same. Not really the same, but it's just like, you know, like, First, I throw you're an Indian guy learning us how to create a site. Uh, what's good? Oh, not not much. Bizology, how are you? Oh, really? I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. So okay, so we'll we'll add like a feature where they can only check either one of NSW or spoiler. They cannot check both. Um, what are some other tags that we can add? Uh, L Excellence, how are you? L excellence, excellence, excellence. Favorites, favorites. Well, that would not really fit with favorites though. Like that would kind of be like something where you would need authentication though. Cause you can have like a user keep track. That would be like something where once the image has been uploaded, someone can favorite the post. How many people can view this image? Uh, so, so basically you need to keep track of how many times the image has been viewed. And then once the image has, been, once the image has reached that limit, uh, I don't know. Uh, I am doing good. Thank you. Oh yeah. The password thing, the password, the private public. Yeah. The password thing. Uh, so let's see. So, uh, private. All right, so uh, we'll have to play around with the options. So, 
Private, anything else? Any other uh, suggestions? The thing with favorites is that favorites, it wouldn't really make much sense because if, you, if you're if you uploading the photo and you're favoriting it, it would, it would make more sense if the photo uh, has been uploaded and then from a from someone who's visiting the page, they can favorite it. That would, that I think would be a lot better. Uh, unlisted, I mean, unlisted is kind of the same as, uh, well, that's not really the same as private public. Let's see, unlisted, oh, let's see. Well, what would unlisted mean? Well, unlisted would basically mean that it's it does not show up in search results. It does not show up like like for example, if you look at Imgur, right? Like let's go to Imgur, for example. Right? If you look at Imgur.com, you'll see that a bunch of these pictures show up. Right? You'll see a bunch of pictures. Like if you go to Imgur.com and you'll you'll see the search feature, right? Well, we don't have a search feature and we don't have like you know a bunch of pictures. Um that are being shown so we won't so we wouldn't need like unlisted for that for example uh old vibes image hosts are cool but in the long run stupid you need the link well the link will be the link will be uh the link will be given to you when you up once you uploaded can only be viewed once like whatsapp image option so a one-time image uh No, I don't. I don't buy it. Can only be viewed once. I mean, it's definitely not a bad idea. Like we can also add some, like maybe something like you know, like delete after thirty minutes, for example, like delete after thirty minutes. But uh, let's see. There's a lot of good ideas. I can write those down though for uh, for maybe you know. Let me let me write those down. I don't want to omit them, but let me write those down. Those are some good ideas that I don't want to throw away. So view only once. How many people can view the image? Unlisted. So unlisted would like I think unlisted would be good if it's like an actual search image engine. You know what I mean? Something like that. Oh yeah, I remember now. I've watched your automatic deployment with GitHub Action video and it's really helpful. I'm glad that you liked it. Animated like a GIF. Uh well, we're allowing the user to upload animated images though so it wouldn't really need to we, we don't really need to like have a, like a, a a check for that you know i think these three would be would make the most sense unless it needs a password oh yeah so that would be private yeah i mean un, yeah pri unlisted slash private yeah so okay so unlisted really means that it just does not show up in the search features like for example if you unlist the video the videos will not show up if you search for it but if you have the direct link, you'll get it. With image hosting, right? Right now, we're uploading an image. And the only way that you can actually get the image is by visiting the exact link. So that's technically unlisted. Like if you search for the image, it will not show up. The thing is, we're not building like, you know, a search feature right now. At least not right now. We're not building a search feature, right? We're only building a, uh, we're only building just the uploading part and sharing it. Like a YouTube search. Yeah, like when you search in YouTube for a video. Okay, I think we'll stick with just these three for now. Uh, I think these three is, I think these three will be fine. So we'll have to add some functionality. So if NSFW is checked, uh, spoiler cannot be checked. If spoiler is checked, NSFW cannot be checked. These two cannot be checked at the same time. Uh, private, so if it's private, yeah, if it's private, um, so if private is checked, we'll add another, we'll add a, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll add like a pop-up to get them to, uh, we'll add a pop up for them to add a password for the picture. So once we add these features, this is this is actually where we will need a database. So before we we got away with actually not needing a database, now we'll actually need a database. So I'll just actually create the component, uh, and then let, let's just create the component real quick, and then uh, I'll see where we can go from there. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's see. All right, so let's go into the image upload page. So I think honestly, I might just start putting everything back into the image upload page because everything is just like in this file and I don't really like that if I'm being honest with you. I kind of don't want everything to be in just this image upload. 
Yeah, I think it'd make much more sense if, like, yeah, I'm gonna do this real quick. Let me do this. And what we'll do is inside container, we'll do this. We will get this. Never had the time to learn TS React. Is TS actually better than JS? It's great in the sense that uh, it helps you catch a lot of potential issues because it's statically tight. So uh, I would highly recommend it for sure. I think it's definitely worth learning in my opinion, you know? Oh yeah, so I'm just gonna move everything to this file because I just like it better. I like it better that way. So this file is gonna be obsolete. All right, so let's get this button. So that button belongs right over here. All right, so let's go. So we'll add the options right over here. So the options will only show up if uh, if file exists. So image options. So watch this. So see how it says hello now? Great, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and style it up a little bit. So with this, we'll pretty much just have the same color as this and we'll add some margin to it. So I think that color is, uh, what is this color? Image upload container. It's 30, 30, 30. So uh, I wonder if I could just reuse a container. Uh, I think I could reuse a container. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, but we will need to give it a back and color. We, will, we still need to give it some styling though. Well, actually, no, 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 I don't want to use container. Whoops, sorry. The container is actually what's wrapping everything. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'll just, for now, I'll just use some inline styling real quick. Uh, and then what we'll do later is we'll put everything in the, we'll, we'll try to put everything in the styled component so we can reuse it. <clears throat> Are you going to limit how much data users can use? Yeah, we'll probably make it so that, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. We can, we can make it so that if the user uploads something that's bigger than like, you know, eight megabytes, we'll say this file is too big. You have to uh, try again. Uh, yeah, I might start with it later. I have my hands on C++ because of school. Yeah, C I mean, C++ is a nice language to learn, though. Okay, uh, and what I'll do is I'll give it a background color of 30-30-30. Okay. Now, I think with the button... We can probably actually just remove the uh, the margin from there because we'll already have it over here, over here already. Border radius, I think the border radius is 10 pixels. And then we'll give it a box sizing of border box and then we'll add some padding. For the padding, let's do 20 pixels, see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. I mean, maybe top and bottom can be 20 and left and right can maybe be uh, maybe 30. 40 pixels, I don't know, 50 pixels. Nah, that's too much. All right, there we go. So now we need a bunch of checkboxes. So so the thing with checkboxes in HTML is that I, I was actually working on this a couple days ago. Not this, but like the checkbox component. And you actually cannot, it, it's actually really limiting. If you want to like style a checkbox, it's actually very limiting. I mean, to be honest, we could just like use this, but I, if I'm being honest with you, I'd rather just create our own checkbox that looks a lot nicer because there's a lot there's not really a, a lot that you can style the default checkbox because i read some stuff on stack overflow that you're better off just creating your own checkbox you know is this going to go live for people to use uh no i'm not i don't have any plans on making it live if i'm being honest let me see if i can actually just get what i need so let's try border radius two pixels solid white can i get a border let's see checkbox 
border. I want to see if I can at least get a border. Yeah, so based on stack overflow, uh, it seems like, uh, it seems like, uh, let's see. It seems like there's like alternatives where you can use either like, a, let's see. Yeah, that's one thing that, that's one thing that's annoying with a lot of these components is that uh, you can't you it's really limited when it comes to styling it. Uh, is this gonna go live? Oh yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not gonna go live. What about limiting the total space allocated to each other? Yeah. Uh, yep. Wait, when you say out, what, what do you mean by space allocated? Do you mean like how much they can upload for one photo? Or 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 how much they can upload like all together. All photos okay I feel like that would be uh, I feel like for that uh, perhaps maybe like doing something like uh, like using cookies or like an IP address uh, you would need like a user to be authenticated though you would need the user to be authenticated because that's I mean there's probably other ways but without authentication it'd be pretty hard because they can always use like they can always use like a VPN they can always use they can always like you know reset their cookies for example Yeah, I really wish we can put a border on this, but unfortunately not. I would like to put a border on this, but uh, it's whatever. It's not. It's not that big of a deal right now. I mean, I could create my own checkbox. Essentially, it'd just be like a box, and when you click on it, it'll show like an icon. And when you click, and, and it just has some stay, that's really it. But it's fine, we'll just leave it like this. Uh, oh, you're doing my NSF through check thing? Yeah, well, it, yeah, if that's what you suggested, then yeah. I know a couple people suggested, but I don't remember who suggested it, but yeah, we're, we're doing it right now. We're not, we're only creating the, we're only creating the, uh, we're only styling this right now. Uh, and then we're, and then I think I'll continue the stream again later this week if I have time. Are you taking any paid projects uh, right now? Uh, at the moment, I mean, not really. I mean, unless if you, if you have an idea, if you if you have an idea and a proposal, I'd like to hear it. Uh, Kyle Games, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually let me change the padding a little bit. So we have top and bottom. Let me try twenty pixels instead, because uh, thirty five seems like it's way too much. Let's try twenty five. If I'm being honest, I actually want it to be aligned with this upload image, which I think is 40 pixels. Actually, let me double check. Let's look at styles real quick. Uh, styles, image upload container, padding 50. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think that's okay. And we'll add like, you know, a margin. We'll do like a margin. Uh, Let's do margin left 10 pixels maybe, or maybe eight. All right, there we go. Now the check, the input does have like some margin itself. Let me see if I can get rid of it. Yeah, there we go. Awesome, okay, so yeah, this, it's not too bad. I'd like to have a border, but uh, let's see, imp checkbox border. There are ways that you can style it but uh, we'd have to like do much of other stuff. And uh, I don't wanna like worry about that right now because we can always worry about this later. Okay, so let's go ahead and create one more. So flex, flex. And actually, you know what? I might as well just put this in a style component. So let's do this.
Oh, I called it type. Whoops. Alright, so what we'll do is we will check the type. And if the type is a checkbox, we will basically give it all the CSS that we want. So uh, I'm just going to move all the CSS here. So height 20 pixels, width 20 pixels, border. So there's no border. So that should do the same thing. And then we will just go into, we'll add a label to. And then what we'll do is for the label, we'll just pretty much just give it a font of bold. Oh, I already have a label actually. Oh, well, I actually already have a label. So I could actually probably just reuse that label. Actually, I gotta get the button. Hold on. Yeah, I do. I gotta. I do gotta actually give the button the. Okay. Yeah. What I'll do instead is for the bottom of for the bottom of this, I'll just give it no uh, margin. So we'll only do a margin top because there's already margin over here already. So that'll be top right, bottom left. Did I do it right? So this is image options. So we have top, right, bottom. Top, right, bottom. Oh, whoops. There we go. Or may I, you know, I'll just do margin top. All right. Uh, so. Wait, what the hell did I just do? Let's move this here, let's move this here. All right, and uh, I think for this div, I think it'd just be better if we just created a separate style for it. So let's do that. Export const image options container. Actually, I'll use section because it has nothing to do with anything else. All right, so we'll just give it a width of 100%. Margin top of 10 pixels, background color 3330. A border radius 10 pixels. Box sizing. Border box. How can we store the PDF of word files in the database? Uh, you would save the file. Well, I mean, so there's a couple ways that you could go about this, but, uh, so what you could do is you can just save it as a blob, but I would suggest you don't. And instead what you do is you save the file to your file system. You save the file to your file system and then you, you create a, um, <clears throat> you save the file to the file system and you keep track of where it is by, you keep track of where it is by keeping the uh, absolute path to that file. Might be able to store it as a blob. You could, yeah, you could store it as a blob, but I would, uh... I read before that you shouldn't do that. But there's its ups, there's its pros and cons. So, Let's see. 
might give it some more margin. All right, so check. All right, and let's see. So, all right, so now it's a little bit tricky because here's the problem. We have, yeah, and I don't, I really don't want pop drill. I think I might, I might actually use a context now. Because here's the problem, right? We have the image options and it's in its own component. And in order to actually get that data submitted with the image, we would actually need to, we would actually have to either, we would have to define the state up here and then pass in the set, the, the setter, the setter functions to this image options in order to see, um, which, which options are checked. And honestly, I don't, I really don't want to prop drill. So I'll just use, I'll probably just use, um, I think what I'll do is instead of using context, I'll actually use a library that I've been wanting to use and it's called Zustin. It's state management. I've been wanting to use that for a while. And I think the best way to actually, you know, I think, I think this is actually a good scenario for using, using Zustin. It's basically going to be state. Uh, so we can pretty much do that. Um, and we can clean up a, and it'll allow us to clean up a lot of code. Okay. But yeah, we do have this checkbox right now. I really wish I could have this border. You know, let me let me figure that out real quick before uh, wait, before, I go, before I go. I uh, shot an email to your business email account on YouTube. It goes over the request detail. All right, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. Thank you. All right, let me go ahead and before I uh, I want to I want to I, I, before I end the stream I want to style this checkbox style checkbox. I really want to style this checkbox. Let's see. So I'm I'm looking at this uh, this article right now. It's giving like a tutorial. All right. Let's see. Oh wow, this actually works. So if you set Pearson, then oh okay, there we go. Awesome. So we can just do it. So that's actually pretty simple. So let's get the color real quick. Uh one second. I actually want to use the same colors as the buttons. As well, I want to be consistent with my colors actually. Actually, no, I'll just use this one, it's fine. The speed at which you're coding is like, feel like I have a long way to go. I mean, um, I mean, hey man, like we all got a lot. I mean, I have a lot of things I have to improve on myself too, you know, like I have a lot of things that I have to get better at. So it might seem like, you know, everything is just going fast pace, but that's how I felt before too. When I was watching people code and watching, you know, how they were doing everything. And, you know, like it just takes practice, you know, I promise you, as long as you just keep practicing and building projects, uh, you'll get to where you want to be. So that's just, uh, that's the best advice that I could, that I could, uh, you know, give to anyone. Okay, now the question here is how do we, how do we actually make it so that it shows the checkbox using doing it like this? So I'm looking at some code right now. Uh, hmm, let me see. So it seems like we can actually use a Unicode character let me see Unicode K. 
characters. Let's see what Unicode characters they have. So we can actually use a bunch of different Unicode characters. Oh, but then it just looks like the same thing though. Huh, that's interesting. Let's try just check. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see. So we have to actually give it some colors. I don't know. I'm just I'm just honestly just playing around with uh with whatever it is that they gave me. Well, not gave me, but like whatever it is that I'm seeing right now. Um So it seems like if I put this content it removes yeah, it removes what I want, which kind of is lame. That's a little bit annoying. Damn, that sucks. Uh, Mud Drank, how are you? Welcome to the stream. How are you? Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I don't know. Yeah, so that doesn't work either. Huh, that sucks. I was looking forward to this working. All right, it's fine. It's fine. What's the best way to learn TypeScript? Uh, so since you already know a language that I assume already, just read the documentation, uh, think about all the things you could do with the language that you know and try to translate over to TypeScript. Lots of Googling, maybe you could watch some videos too. Uh, SMA, how are you? Welcome, welcome to the stream. That's interesting. Why is it a... Uh... Interesting how that doesn't want to. Oh, wait, what the hell? When did I have it as with? Do I know Python? Uh, I mean, I've used Python before. I'm not like I, I would say that I'm good at Python if I like you know like I, okay how do I explain this like I have used Python for projects before but I don't really use it anymore but if I were to like you know get into it it would it wouldn't be like you know the most difficult thing in the world for me you know because I, I have used it before that's why all right uh maybe we could give this background a different color too we maybe yeah let's try giving it a different color yeah, we don't want everything to be the same color. You know, it looks just, just looks to look boring. Mm, no, that's not so nice. 
Yeah, I mean, that's okay. All right, so, um, all right. Okay. Yeah, I think this will do for now. I think this will do. Um... What's going on? Wait, what? That's weird. All right, we have a bug. So it seems like the bug is that when we delete the photo, it won't allow you to re-upload it again. So if I delete this photo, it doesn't allow you to re-upload it again. Okay, that's interesting. So let's find out why. So this happens because when I click on the X, uh, let's see what happens. So uh, if we go to the uh, image preview, we can see that right over here, uh, we call reset, right? We call reset and it sets the file and source to, uh, let's see. But why would that be a problem though? Because for example, like, okay, let me refresh. So I upload this photo. Or not upload, but like it's like that, but th it doesn't let me re upload. It doesn't let me, uh, that's very strange. So it seems like something's wrong with the source because the source is what's controlling. So we're resetting, right? We're setting the file to um, undefined, okay? But it seems okay, so it seems like maybe the source there's nothing wrong with the source, it's just that file. Uh, let's see, so we're doing the file source. Okay, you know what, let me do this. Let's show this all the time. And let's see what happens. Okay, so let's, whoops. Let's upload an image. All right, here we get rid of it. Let's upload the same image. Okay, so when I upload, so when I clear it and when I upload the image again, it doesn't even want to show the source. So it seems like something's wrong with the source. And it, it might be, oh, actually, you know, I think I know what, I, I think I know what the problem is. The problem is, is that source is being updated, right? But we're not, it seems like we're not re-rendering it. We're not re-rendering the component. So we should probably re-render the component when source or file is updated. Uh, so I think what we could do is let's call use effect. And what we could do is we can re-render when source is updated. Let's see what this, let's see what happens here. Okay, no, that seems like that didn't do the trick. Maybe I'm wrong. So let's try source in file. So it should do re-render. Okay, no. So it seems like something is wrong. It make the undefined. Is this for training or will we really host an image hosting site? Uh, I'm not actually going to host it because hosting an image site obviously is like, you know, there's a lot of things that you got to take care of because people can obviously upload stuff that should not be uploaded. And I don't want to deal with, you know, that kind of stuff. Cause you know, like you, that can get you into trouble. Right. So I'm not going to actually deploy this, but the code is available. So if anyone wants to take it and host it themselves, they can uh, do that. I think make the undefined empty string. So. It seems like there's something wrong with the source because the source, um, hmm. Let me see. Maybe we have to pass, maybe we have to re-render in here, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see. So I know for a fact, there's there's definitely, there's definitely um, a new file. Okay, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Okay, let's see if hello gets logged, okay? Hello? Okay, so it seems like hello's not even being logged. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do some, we gotta like actually figure out what's going on. So it seems like this file is not being Okay, I think I know what the problem is. I think, okay, I think it might be because this variable is referring to this variable up over here. 
I think I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but that's the problem. Let's see. Let's do. But it shouldn't because closure, right? It's referring to the. It should refer to the 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 variable inside this. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes it might be a little bit weird. So. Okay, no. I know for a fact with because of closure, that's just how closure works. So it shouldn't even be an issue. Okay, so we have the file uploaded. Okay, so it seems like it's not even going inside this. I think I might I think I think I may have figured out what the issue is. Okay. So I think, okay, so what the problem is, it's nothing to do with our code. What the problem is that when we reset the file, um, when, when we, when we, when we actually, uh, when we actually reset the file, right. By resetting it. Okay. So basically right over here, when we call, when we click on the button and it resets, when we click on the X and it, it, it resets the state, it resets the file and resets the source that doesn't actually, um, I don't think that actually resets the actual file that was uploaded. Um, well, not uploaded, the actual file with the file change, because I think, um, I think maybe we need to print the default actually. Let me double check. It, I know for a fact that uh, the on change event, the on change event is not being triggered because it's still it's still seeing it as the same file. So that's the problem right now. When we reset the file and we re-upload the same file, it will uh, it will see that as the same file and it won't detect a change. So I'm trying to see how we can actually um, So I think is there a way we can actually reset an input? I think there's a way, right? So let's see. Okay, so we have this file input ref right over here. I think what we need to actually do is do file input ref dot current dot reset. Uh, programmatically reset input field input field. Or we could put it into a form and give it a ref, but. Uh, So we can't even update a ref either. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see. Uh, and the problem is that if we update a ref, yeah, that's a problem. If we update a ref, the component might not even get any, the, the component won't be notified, which is a problem. So even if I were to manually update a ref, let me see something. Is there not a function to reset? Is there like not a function that I can use to just reset everything or? So the problem is that, okay, so the problem is that the file is actually still uploaded or not uploaded. The file is still there, um, right? The file is still there, but when we reset it, it does not actually do anything with the, uh, it doesn't actually do anything with, um, like it, like the file itself is still there. We're not actually resetting anything. So when we try to, when we, when we reset the state of file and source and we upload the same one, it, it still sees it as the same file. That's why the on change event doesn't get, that's why I think the on change event doesn't get detected. I think there might be another event 
on file. Let me see, detect. I think there might be another event. So there's the on change, but is there another event? No, it seems like that's the only event. The only thing that I can think of is clearing the file manually, like clearing the clean the ref manually, but let me see. Update ref react. Uh, I think what we've got to do is let's see. Yeah, it's not gonna let me. It's not even gonna let me. Uh... Okay, let's try this. Yeah, it's not gonna let me. It's it's only a read only. So are we not able to update refs, or should we even update refs? That's something that we'll have to read up on. Yeah, I don't even think we can, we can't even manually update ref either. We wouldn't, because it's it's immutable, right? It's immutable. The only thing that I could do is get a function that will reset, that could reset the ref or reset the value in an immutable way. Another thing that I can think of is wrapping it inside a form, passing a ref to the form, and then calling reset. And I think that's honestly the only thing that we could probably do. Because this reset won't actually reset the form. So do I even need? Yeah, I do need a ref. Okay. Yeah, let's create form ref. Lots of refs. I'll have to figure out a way how we can refactor everything. All right, so instead of a div, I guess we could put this inside a form now to make it look better. Okay, so do we even have the button? Do we have the buttons at the form? Okay, we don't have a button. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so on, so let me just do form ref. The only thing, so let me try this real quick. Let me upload an image. Okay, we also need to fix this issue too with image upload page. Okay, so what I'll do is now that I have the form ref, I guess what I can do is I can do form ref dot reset dot current dot Okay. Alright, let's try it. So let's go back and let's see what happens. So let's refresh. So I'm gonna delete this. There we go. So that fixes it. So that was the original bug. So now if we remove the image and we try to re-upload it or we try to reselect it, it'll actually work. So that was the original problem. I'm glad we figured that out. Though I wonder if we even need to, well, we actually still need to reset the state because if we don't, it won't actually remove the image. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot of freaking code, but I'm glad we were able to get a workaround to for this. Though I wonder if we can actually remove the file ref and instead use the form ref to get the file somehow. Child nodes. Let me try something real quick. Let me console log this. Okay. So, uh, file input ref. What's this? Hold on. Uh, so we have input. Okay, yeah. I mean, I could actually. Uh, so I know that this is the second. It's in the second index. So I could just do this. 
Oops. I could hard code it, get the actual file. So instead of using the file ref input, let's try this. And we know that we can hard code the value too because we know that's always going to be there. Now, and we also can typecast this to, to an HTML input element. Whoops. Is it going to be casted or? What am I doing? Hold on. I could just do this. There we go. And then file input. Uh, what was it again? Dot click. So refresh. Any cool playlist while coding? I usually listen to random stuff on YouTube. Like I listen to like, I, I usually listen to EDM or house music. I, I like those a lot. All right, there we go. We just did that. So I actually don't even need the file ref anymore. I actually don't even need the file input ref anymore. So I can just get rid of that. So that saves us from needing that. And I can just get rid of the ref over here. So all I gotta do is I just gotta click on this and it'll still work because when I click on so the reason why we had that file input ref was to actually uh, programmatically uh, trigger the file browser by doing the uh, file input ref .current click. But since we already have a ref on the form, we can just you know hard code the index that the file input is on, and we can just click like that. So we don't even need this, and I prefer to do that because uh, you know. Okay, and when I click on it. We should also write some test cases because we are making a lot of changes. And when we make a lot of changes, uh, we want to make sure that those changes don't break our current code. Um, let's see, it's 11.23 now. All right, I think honestly, this might probably, we, we, I think honestly, I'm going to call it a day because we, we actually did a lot of stuff. So let me actually do this. Uh, so let me do this real quick. Um, What's the new icon and color theme? Yes, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, we did a, we, we, we accomplished a lot actually. Like we were able to add this, we were able to upload the actual file and then sh bring it to the next page. Um, yeah, so I think, I think in the next stream, what we'll do is we'll actually uh, work on these features. So this will actually require a database so I'll need to, uh, I'll need to put a note. So to do, uh, I think the next thing we'll do is integrate. Um, I think we'll use MongoDB because I think MongoDB is probably the best situation because the way that I see it is that with MongoDB, there's a lot of reasons why we could use it. Um, one, we don't really have a lot of relational data, at least not right now, uh, because we don't even know what it is that we'll need, right? So with MongoDB. I think it'll be better because with MySQL, we have to worry about a bunch of like, you know, tables and stuff. And for now, we won't really need, we, we don't really have too much relational data. So MongoDB would just be just fine or any NoSQL database. So integrate MongoDB with the backend, the backend API. Uh, we will need to save uh, the image, the image's key and the URL uh, in the database. We will need to also uh, save any settings for the image. So NSFW spoiler private. Uh, we will also need to save a password for the image if there are any. And uh, we'll also need to handle some logic for the backend too. Uh, for protected images. 
we need to uh okay so yeah for, let me just write this down and then we can actually uh, do this on the next screen so basically for the way that we handle protected images uh what we do is for protected images on the front end we will call the api call the nest js api with the images key uh check the database and find the correct image by key slash ID. If the image is found, uh, if the image is found, check if the image is uh, public or private slash protected. Okay. Uh, so if the image, if the image is public, we can return. Uh, so I'm trying to think how we would do this. If the image is private. So if the image is private, how would we actually make it so that the user can actually see the image? Because I think we would need a couple of steps, right? Because if the image is private, we'll need the front end to know if it's a private image or not. So on the front end, what we could do is we can actually show a prompt that says, this image is private. Please enter a passcode or a password to see the image. And what happens from there is that there's going to be a prompt and we can send another request to the backend, this time with a passcode. Uh, and then we can show the image. I think actually, maybe we just actually, actually, no, that's going to be a little bit tricky because I just realized that if the image is private, what, what needs to happen is this, because on the, if, if the image is private, they can actually still directly access the image right now because um because it's it's actually public for everything because we set the we set the read write permission to or i'm sorry not write we set the read permission to public for everything so anyone that has the direct link can actually see it so what we need to actually do is if the image is private well first of all when we upload the image we'll need to actually set the permission on the back end to private when when it's like the way that it's saved on the digital ocean spaces it needs to be saved as a private image okay what we need to do then is when we read the image, when we call the Digital Ocean Space API, we need to actually uh, call the API and get the image. We can't actually get the URL anymore. So we'll actually need to get the image from the Digital Ocean Spaces. And that actually requires us, re requires us to actually, I think, download the image manually because no outside source can actually see the image. You can only get the image if you actually have the access keys. So I'll have to write a note, uh, allow user to upload a public slash private image, need to update backend to set the permission to public or private. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we gotta get done. So I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot of cool stuff that we gotta do for, uh, for the next stream. I'm definitely excited because it's, it's definitely a lot of cool stuff uh, that makes that adds more features to our application. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, I think that's going to be it for the stream. I really appreciate everyone for joining and chatting. Uh, let's see. For If the person's still here, the theme is, uh, let's see, I think the theme is Adam Material Theme. Anyways, so thank you guys so much for watching the stream. I really appreciate you guys for joining and checking out the stream and collaborating and and, and asking questions as well as answering. Uh, if you guys want to get in contact with me, I have a Discord server, so feel free to join the Discord server. The link is down below. Okay, the link is down below. Join the Discord server, ask me any questions. I'm gonna get off. Uh, I might stream again later today in the afternoon if I feel like it. Uh, if I don't, I'll probably see you guys maybe uh, next weekend or maybe sometime this week. So that's pretty much it for the stream. Once again, thank you guys, and I'll see you in my next stream.